These are my five steps for how to go vegan without giving anything up. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jordan and I make videos all about my vegan lifestyle and just living a more healthy and well holistic life. Today we are going to tackle how to go vegan. I think for a lot of people who have heard about veganism, all they may think of is all the things that you can't have which in some ways is true. What a vegan diet means is a diet that does not have any animal products included. So no meat, no dairy, no cheese, eggs, even honey is off the plate for vegans. Although that is the definition of a vegan diet, what I love about a vegan diet and what I've come to understand is that it's not about deprivation and it's not about what you can't have. You can totally shift that mindset and focus on all the amazing foods that you do get to eat. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Also, there's going to be a sixth bonus tip at the end, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Step number one, have two different fruits or two different vegetables or one vegetable and one fruit with every single meal. The reason why I love this step is because it's totally focused on adding to your diet. We're not talking about taking anything away. We're just talking about adding some amazing nutrient dense foods to your diet and really putting a focus on it. So you may already find that you do this. You may already have two fruits, two vegetables or one or the other at every meal and that's wonderful. But if you don't, this is a great place to start. This is actually the place that I started way back when I just started my health journey. My goal wasn't even to become vegan. It was just to start eating healthier and eating more whole, real foods. I got the idea for this tip from one of my favorite blogs, 100daysofrealfood.com. It was one of their tips on the blog just to get people to start eating real healthy food. It had nothing to do with being vegan, but I also think it really relates to just moving towards a more plant-based lifestyle. It really helps you get more colors and different textures and things on your plate. If you're focusing on having to have two fruits or two vegetables or one or the other at every single meal. It definitely made me try new things and realize that I really loved different pairings and different things put together. So some great examples would be, you know, if you eat oatmeal in the morning, top it with two different kinds of fruits like berries or apples, or for lunch, have a salad with cucumber or carrots or a wrap or a sandwich that not only has some leafy greens, but also has some radishes or mushrooms or artichokes, olives, anything, tomatoes, any of these things would definitely count. For dinner, just make sure you have two different sides of vegetables. So have some really great, healthy roasted potatoes or sweet potatoes along with broccoli or green beans or a side salad. Just this step of focusing on nutrient dense fruits and vegetables in every meal is going to begin the process of crowding out the not so good things for you. And that's what I love is like, you don't have to think I have to give all this stuff up. You can still have all of those things on your plate if you want. But what ends up happening is as you eat more and more fruits and vegetables and you fill up on those first, your body is gonna get all those great nutrients and it's gonna end up not wanting the bad stuff anyway. But you never had to tell yourself no. Step number two is to find your why. So find the motivation, find the reason why you want to move towards a vegan or a plant-based lifestyle. And let me tell you what a good reason not to move towards this diet is. And that would be if you just wanna do it because your favorite celebrity does it or because somebody else wants you to do it. You have to want it for yourself. We're talking about major behavior change and you've gotta find the intrinsic motivation as far as why you want to do it and do some research on your own. Now there's plenty of different ways to do that. If you're not into reading books or just don't have time, there are so many good podcasts, documentaries, speeches on YouTube and books and, and audiobooks that you can read and listen to 
any time just to get the information and, and understand some of the main reasons why other people go vegan. The three main reasons that people go vegan would be number one for the animals and to decrease animal cruelty and just the exploitation of animals in our society. Number two would be for the environment because animal agriculture and fishing is so so detrimental to our environment and our oceans. Number three is for your health and for your longevity. Any doctor will tell you that a more plant-based diet is going to fill your body with nutrients and what it needs to fight off disease and illness and give you tons and tons of energy. There are so many health benefits to starting a plant-based diet and there's so many resources and great books to read and videos to watch that will explain it in a lot more detail than I can in this short video. But my point is, if any of those three motivators or those three reasons why resonate with you, seek out information for that. So if you're not as concerned about health, but you're really passionate about the animals and the environment, watch those documentaries or read those books. And that's really gonna help you, again, find your why. I will link some of my favorite documentaries, videos, podcasts, and books that I read in the very beginning or watched in the very beginning that really helped me on this journey. My first two that really started me on this plant-based or vegan path weren't even based on or trying to promote a vegan diet. And those were Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food. And number two, the documentary that I first watched was called Food Inc. So those are a great place to start, especially if you're kind of like, veganism just seems a little much for me, but I am kind of interested and want to eat more healthfully. Try those two first and just see where it takes you. Step number three, write down all the vegan foods that you already eat and that you already love. For example, maybe you love PB&Js or you love cereal or carrots and hummus or pita and hummus or chips and salsa or a bean burrito. All of those things are already vegan. If it's easier, find a chart on Pinterest or a chart on the internet, just search vegan food and get an entire list of all the vegan food in the world and highlight or circle all the ones that you already eat and you already love. You're going to be happily surprised that you already eat a lot of vegan food. You're just probably not thinking about it being vegan. Once you have that and you know, okay, these are the things that I already eat and I already love, just start thinking about how you can incorporate those more into your diet or how you can take your favorite foods and pair them with maybe some newer foods that you're not really sure about. One of the things that I did is I used to think that I hated berries and I just didn't like the texture, but I knew they were so, so good for you. So what I started doing was I knew I liked peanut butter. So on my oatmeal every morning, which you'll know if you follow me on Instagram, I do a big scoop of peanut butter with a ton of berries and being able to pair one of my favorite foods with a food that I wasn't really so sure about has gotten me to like that newer food. And now if I wanted to, I could eat berries just by themselves because I've become to love them because I paired them with something that I already really liked. So that is a great tip if you're a picky eater or you have a picky eater. Again, we're not talking about taking anything away. We're just focusing on what we already can eat. Step number four is to buy some pantry and refrigerator staples and start swapping out some of those animal-based products for vegan products. So again, I'm not saying you need to throw away the cream cheese or throw away your carton of milk if you just bought it. I by no means am saying that. Start noticing at your grocery store if there's a vegan option and you know, next time you're there and you, and you need it, just try it. So a great example would be if you do have cereal every morning or coffee and you put milk in your coffee or in your cereal, try almond milk or coconut milk or soy milk. Just buy it, like you can buy some of the smaller versions so that, you know, if you don't like it, you're not making a huge investment. And just see if you like it. If you don't like it, don't ever buy it again. Another great option would be to swap out for butter. Buy Earth Balance buttery spread. It tastes 
just like butter. Actually, my husband prefers it. He likes it a lot better than butter. And you can use it in baking, use it anywhere that you would normally use butter. A great swap for honey is to swap with maple syrup or agave or brown rice syrup. There's so many other options out there and new foods that you could try and you might end up loving. Step number five is to find some plant-based or vegan recipes that look good to you, especially if you like to cook. This is gonna be a lot of fun. If you're a Pinterest user, make a board on Pinterest, title it, you know, plant-based recipe ideas or vegan recipe ideas, and you know, search your favorite dishes. So if you love mac and cheese, or you love spaghetti, or you love mashed potatoes, whatever it might be, just search for the vegan recipes of those. Search vegan mashed potatoes, vegan mac and cheese. You are going to find a wealth of amazing recipes to try. Start with your favorites and it's not gonna feel like you're depriving yourself in any way. You're just trying out new ways to make your favorite foods. I recommend find at least one breakfast recipe, one lunch recipe, one snack recipe, a dinner recipe, and a dessert recipe. So five plant-based recipes, pin them, save them to your computer, on your phone, whatever you like to do, and try making them. Okay, so it's time for my number six step, which is actually a bonus tip, and that is don't be hard on yourself. Food is something that is so connected to our emotions and our day-to-day -day routines and it is tied to memories. We eat to nourish ourselves. And so we're talking about making some major changes and it's going to be a process for most people. And it's not something to be hard on yourself about. So I know when I first started, if I went to somebody's home for a meal or I went out to eat and I tried my best to order vegan or vegetarian at the time and something didn't come to me the way I wanted it to, and I would be so down on myself. But really and truly, it's not about perfection. It is about trying every day and doing the best you can and knowing that every little step you're taking is one step in the right direction. Now, if you can go vegan overnight, that's awesome and I applaud you. But I would say for most people, it's something that is just gonna be a process and take baby steps. Even if just one of my steps or suggestions sounds good to you, like maybe the first one, just adding the fruits and vegetables every day, that is a huge step in the right direction and you should be so proud of yourself for making that step. Once you start one step and kind of get in the groove of that, maybe it's months where that's all you're focusing on and then start incorporating other things. Like maybe you watch documentary or maybe then you try a, a vegan recipe or maybe you adopt meatless Mondays in your household where an entire day of the week you don't consume any meat. Or maybe you do like I did. I did the vegan before six diet. So my breakfast, my lunch and my snack were all vegan, but I kind of, gave myself some freedom for dinner, especially if you live with a partner or a family or other people like a roommate that's not ready to jump on this plant-based lifestyle with you. And that's usually dinner is a meal that we share with others. Don't make that meal vegan yet. You know, make all the meals that you prepare yourself vegan and then give yourself some slack for the other stuff. And then later on, maybe you'll decide, okay, I'm ready to go all the way. That's what I did and that's what really, really, truly worked for me and I think made it a lasting change. Another great option is to just cut out one type of meat. So maybe commit to no longer eating beef or cow or maybe commit to no longer eating pig or pork and just keep chicken, fish and eggs in your diet or go vegetarian and keep cheese in your diet. Whatever it is for you, any step is incredible and who knows where it'll take you in the future. The point is, this is a journey towards your better health, toward a better health for the environment and a better world for our animals. But it's not about deprivation. It's not about things you can't have. It's about all the amazing food and nourishment that you're adding to your life. I by no means am preaching to anyone that they should go vegan, again, because it has to be a choice that you make on your own. But I, what I would hope for everyone is they get to a point where they feel the energy and 
the overall compassion and sense of well-being that I have come to gain from eating this diet. It's such an amazing feeling and I wish it for everyone. Those are my five steps plus my sixth bonus tip. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. Like this video if you want to see more like it and comment down below what your biggest struggle is or your biggest barrier to either being vegan or starting your vegan journey. So I certainly know there are still things that are really hard for me because we don't live in a vegan world and I would love to hear what your struggles are and so maybe we can all help each other with those. Other than that, that is all and I will see you guys in my next video next week. Bye.